Yeah, it's one o'clock and uh, I have to say good afternoon. And thank you for joining us today for this webinar with Merck. Unlocking the Ultra Factor tips, tricks and benefits of protein sample prep devices. Before moving on to our speaker, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Eva Albertson, a commercial communication specialist at Fisher Scientific. Here at Fisher Scientific, our team has created a series of informative webinars designed to keep our customers updated on our products, strengthen their knowledge and skills, explore the latest available technology, and provide opportunities for knowledge sharing with relevant experts. To discover upcoming webinars or have a look at previous webinars, you can visit our dedicated webinar web page. <coughs> they are available in the program section of our homepage as well as in the footer part. Please also note that we are recording this webinar for future availability on our website. Now I would like to introduce my colleague, Tina Yuli who is also a commercial communication specialist at Future Scientific. Tina will explain how the question and answer session will be conducted. So over to you, Tina. Thank you very much, Eva. I welcome everyone. My name is Tina Yuling, and today I will lead the question and answer session after the end of the presentation. As an attendee of this webinar, you are encouraged to ask any question related to the topic at any point during the session. You can easily submit your question by typing them in the dedicated chat box located on the right side of your screen. We will try to answer all the questions during the Q&A segment. So, and now I think we are ready to start with the webinar. Today, we are joined by two colleagues from our supplier Merck, Pavel Kulicak and Lorenz Ivet. Pavel has a PhD in biology. He joined Millipur in 1997 and is now the technology manager in the EMEA region for Merck. Lorraine has a PhD in cellular and molecular biology. She joined the Merck group in 2021 as a technical support specialist. So, and now I will hand over to Pavel. I wish all of you an interesting and informative webinar. Uh, thank you, Tina, for presenting us. So nothing else to say, just let's start the webinar. My name is Pavel Krolichak, as I was already introduced, so uh, let's spend some time on ultrafiltration products, ultrafiltration tips and tricks, which helps you to concentrate, to purify your proteins and other biomolecules and also viruses. Uh, how to position ultrafiltration among the other filtration processes? Uh, we have different filtration processes. It depends on the application and depends on the pore size. So we can speak about macrofiltration, microfiltration, ultrafiltration. As you can see, the difference in the pore size of the membranes uh, somehow uh, distinguish this type of filtration. We have another one, reverse osmosis uh, type of filtration. This one is being used for the uh, water purification system, so it is not shown here. Uh, when doing filtration, microfiltration or macrofiltration, uh, we are using the so-called normal flow filtration. What it means? The feed flow is perpendicular to the membrane. 100% of the fluid flows goes through the membrane and becomes filtrated. The important point is that 100% of the molecules of the um, undissolved particles needs to be retained on the membrane. So with that, we are speaking about micro or macro filtration membranes that they have absolute pore size. And typically, as mentioned already, they are used to separate undissolved particles from dissolved particles in the solution. And then ultrafiltration, what is it? This is the process of separating and concentrating dissolved macromolecules using a membrane filter with a defined nominal pore size. What it means nominal, nominal pore size, it, because of the structure of the membrane, because of the structure of the proteins, means that not all particles, biomolecules, which are bigger than the pore size, are retained on the membrane. Uh, some of them might pass through the membrane even if they are bigger than the pores of the membrane. Uh, the important point is to have the recovery as high as possible. So not 100% will be retained on the membrane, but at least should be 95 or as Merck with our devices, we are claiming that 
the retention rate might be not smaller than 99%. Uh, to distinguish, to choose the right membrane for the ultrafiltration processes, we are not, in fact, operating with the pore size. We are uh, operating with the molecular cutoffs. And these are the most popular cutoffs which are present in the market. These are 3 kilodaltons, 10 kilodaltons, 30, 50, and 100 kilodaltons. Uh, once again, coming to the positioning of the ultrafiltration in the terms of the pore sizes and what for which purposes uh, the ultrafiltration is being used. So as you can see, the pores are very small and it is being used, as mentioned already, mainly to the proteins, but not only, also to uh, nucleic acids, also to viruses. With that uh, small pores, it will be really tricky and difficult to use the nominal flow filtration for ultrafiltration processes. This is why for the ultrafiltration uh, processes, the tangential flow filtration is applied what it means and how it works. As you can see on the picture, uh, the sample is going along the membrane. It's not going directly through the membrane. And because of the difference on the pressure, in the pressure of the inlet and outlet, then it creates so-called transmembrane pressure. And it allows some particles, biomolecules, which are smaller than the pore sizes, go through the membrane. Uh, so only some of the feed flow is converted into filtrate and the remaining feed flow returns to the feed tank. And as said, this is mainly used, this tangential flow filtration is mainly used for ultrafiltration processes, but for some production purposes, it is also used for microfiltration processes. This is the ideal, what you can see on this picture, uh, the ideal tangential flow filtration. Uh, I mentioned already, it is used mainly for the pharma production purposes. How this tangential flow filtration is applicable for the research uh, devices? The main point is how to position, how to put the membrane panels into the product. So they are oriented on the way that we are speaking here about tangential flow-like filtration. This is not 100% tangential flow filtration, but uh, the orientation of the membrane is to support, to mimic the tangential flow filtration. So with that, uh, the proteins, the uh, sample is flushed along the membrane to the bottom of the product. So you can have here so-called dead stop. Why it is so important? We cannot do ultrafiltration. We cannot do the concentration uh, to dryness. We need to have spread some volumes at the dead stop to be sure that we can recover the protein. Uh, with such orientation of the membrane with tangential flow-like uh, process, the membrane is being clocked as late as possible. And uh, in the same time, when the proteins are concentrated in the dead stop, in the same time, the salts, the smaller biomolecules than the opening of the membranes, are going through the membrane. Uh, another important point to know about ultrafiltration is uh, which kind of membranes are being used in the ultrafiltration devices. These, there are two main membranes being used for these purposes regenerated cellulose and polyether sulfon. What are the main differences? Regenerated cellulose with the same cutoff like PES membrane, uh, this membrane has the more tight port structure. Polyether sulfon PES membrane is more open uh, with wider pore size distribution. Means that at the beginning, when comparing PES membrane and regenerated cellulose membrane, you can probably see, and you will see it in a second on the movie, on the recording, uh, that PES membrane is faster. But PES membrane having the wider pore size distribution uh, is not retaining so much protein like, like regenerated cellulose. This is why uh, we are applying rule of three and rule of two. When you have your protein of interest, you would like to concentrate this protein using PES membrane uh, to choose the right cutoff, you should divide your uh, uh, protein uh, size by three means, for example, if you have your protein with 60 kilodaltons, then to choose light, right PES membrane, you need to divide the 60 kilodaltons by three, and then you are getting 20 kilodaltons, means that you need to choose a, a membrane which is around this value. When using regenerated cellulose, which is more tight membrane, you need to divide the size of your protein by two, means if you have still 60K protein of the interest, you need to choose the membrane, divide by two, 30 kilodaltons. 
Doing so, you can achieve similar effects doing PES membrane or regenerated cellulose membrane. Uh, the one other important point is that regenerated cellulose is sealed with plastic by heat. PES membrane, due to this its chemical structure, cannot be sealed with plastic by, uh, by heat. It is sealed with plastic by glue. It leads to some extractables, which might appear in your sample after protein concentration, which may affect your uh, further analysis. Next slide, uh, it will be, in fact, the comparison video. You will see the differences in the during the process of filtration. So here on the left-hand side, you can see two tubes with regenerated cellulose, cellulose membrane. On the right side, you can see two tubes with PES membrane. The same cutoff is here and the same protein is being used. Now see what I mentioned already, how fast PES membrane is. It is faster, but let's wait a second. It is faster, but as you can see, more protein is passing through the membrane means the protein uh, of your interest is concentrated less than using regenerated cellulose. So what is important to remember that with ultra filtration, not speed is the most important factor, but recovery is the most important factor. So let's move further with the deck. Mm. Uh, just let me give you the short product overview before we'll jump to the lab and you will see all the products live. Amicon. Amicon, this is the brand of Merck, uh, which um, means these are all the devices which are being used for the, for the ultrafiltration processes. Most of the devices, they are using this brand name Amicons. Just wondering, uh, probably not all of you know uh, what, how the name Amicon comes, comes from. Amicon in the until 1997 was the US company uh, very well worldwide known as the producer of ultrafiltration devices. In 1997, Miripor acquired Amicon and now this brand is still with us as being the most recognizable brand in the market uh, in regards to ultrafiltration processes. So this is a gold standard in centrifugal concentration devices, proteins, DNA, nanoparticles. High recovery, the highest recovery because of the regenerated cellulose membrane. Uh, there is patented invert spin for complete retentate recovery and true controlled dead stop, which avoids spinning to dryness, which I already mentioned. The structure of the Amicon devices is shown here. So what is important to, to notice on this, on this picture is that we have the right membrane panels, which are reducing membrane polarization a large area of the membrane for the faster filtration, even if regenerated cellulose, and a very important point, truly built in a retentate dead stop. Means you cannot over concentrate your sample to dryness, means you can still recover the sample, even if you are uh, doing the centrifugal a bit longer than, than expected. Here's the short overview about all the products you will be see you will be seeing very shortly live. So we have different centrifugal devices. Uh, this type of the device you should choose depends on the volume of your sample. So starting of the small samples, starting from the 500 microliters up to even 70 milliliters for the centrifugal mode. Uh, last but not least, we do have also the pressure-driven devices. As you can see here, this is Amicon Stirred Cell. Uh, they are um, designed for the bigger volumes, starting from the 50 through 200 up to 400 milliliters. They are designed to, uh, to work with the proteins, uh, which are more delicate, and some of them might not uh, stand the centrifugation process. The, the process with uh, Amicon steroids is slower, but then you are sure that your protein is safe. <clears throat> we do have also multi-weight 96 well played with ultrafiltration membranes. With that, it means that you can do your sample purification concentration. During one centrifugal step, you can uh, concentrate up to 96 proteins in the same time. And of course, what I already mentioned, we do have few uh, cutoffs available. This is 3 kilodaltons, 10 kilodaltons, 30, 50, and 100. In some other products, we still do have 5 kilodaltons membrane, and also we do have 300 kilodaltons membrane, membrane, but they are not the membranes which are incorporated into our Amicon family. 
I mentioned about inverted spin and just one slide, uh, you'll be also see it live in a few minutes. What is inverted spin and why it is so important to have this feature uh, in the devices? When we are concentrating the smallest uh, volumes, for example, Amicon 0.5, from 500 microliters, the concentrate, uh, concentrated volume is 15 microliters. It could be very difficult to pipette it out from the insert. So with that, uh, we are implementing so-called inverted spin, means that the insert, after the centrifugation concentration step, you just taken away from you are just taken away from one uh, tube and you put upside down to another tube and doing one short another centrifugation step. And after one minute uh, or even shorter, you have your 15 microliters concentrated sample into new. With that, I'm leaving the stage, Lorraine, and I leave uh, you uh, with uh, Lorraine, who will be presenting live from the lab all the products which I have been talking about already. So, Lorraine, the stage is yours. Thank you, Pavel. Hello, everyone. You can see I'm in the lab, so I'll provide a live overview and a zoom on the different products that we just mentioned in the slides. And we'll start with the centrifugal filter with the Amicon Ultra. I'll go also over the ultra filtration plate and finish with the Amicon stir cell. So now I'm just going to zoom on my bench where you will see the first products. So here you can see a line or the four different formats of the Amicon ultra centrifugal filters from the smaller volume 0.5, 2 mL, 4 mL and 15 mL. If we look at how they're designed, you see they all have a filter cup or an insert and a collection tube. Like this, if I take the largest device, um, on this insert, you can see that there's the molecular rating of the membrane that is printed here. There's it's, there's no way to tell by, um, by just looking at the membrane what is the rating, so it's important to keep track. You can see the graduation. This is to follow the concentration of your concentrates um, and the volume, the concentration factor. And then you see that on each side, you have two vertical elongated membrane panels to filtrate your sample. And you see that the membrane panels don't go all the way to the bottom of the filter cup. And this is how we built the dead stop to prevent the sample to be, um, to be concentrated to dryness. Now for the Amicon Ultra 0.4, it's the same filter cup, just a bit thinner. And then for the Amicon Ultra 2 and 0.5, it's actually the same filter cup, but we have extended the reservoir of the Amicon Ultra 2 for a larger volume. But you see again the graduation membrane rating and the two membrane panels on each side. Now I will spend a couple minutes on each of them just to show you how to use them. And we'll start with the smaller device, the Amicon Ultra 0.2. When you order this product, you would get a box with three different bags, and each bag will, will contain the filter cup or inserts. One bag will contain all the filtrates collection tube, and one bag will contain all the concentrate collection tube. Those tubes are actually the same, but this is to allow you to run your entire assay without additional plasticware. So to use the Amicon Ultra 0.5, you insert your filter cup inside your filtrate collection tube. And we recommend to do this always in the same way. So would you hold your collection tube with the cap on the side and insert the filter cup with graduation towards you. Now you can load your sample with your pipettes from the top, close it, and place it in the centrifuge. So this type of device is compatible with a fixed angle rotor such as this one. And then now that you have orientated the filter cup in a certain way in the tube, you just place it in the rotor so that the cap is towards the center. And then inside of your tube, you want your two membrane panel here. I'm just taking the larger insert to show you. You want them to be parallel to the centrifuge floor. And this is to allow the sample to be swiped along the membrane to have this tangential flow like so, um, filtration that Pavel mentioned. If you have your filter cup like this, the sample is going to be swiped mostly against plastic, which is not going to be efficient. At the end of your spin, you can recover your little tube. And here I'll take a few seconds to mention tip number one. So tip number one is going to be 
always keep your filtrate until the end of your assay. Let's say you this is the first time you're running the assay. You're just trying different molecular weight cutoff. And the, the one that you choose actually lets uh, quite a lot of your protein passing through the filtrate. If you discard your filtrate, your protein is gone. If you keep it until the end, you can just refilter it to recover your sample. So always keep your filtrates. And then tip number two is going to be on recovery. Here, like Pavel mentioned, this is a very thin and narrow filter cup. You may not have access with the pipettes. So what you want to do is to perform a reverse spin. So here, you just take your filter cup and flip it upside down inside your concentrate collection tube. That is your reverse spin. You put it back in your centrifuge for one last spin, and you'll recover every single microliter of your concentrate. So that's it for the Amicon Ultra 0.5 for the smaller centrifugal filters. So now we'll have a look at the size right above, which is the Amicon Ultra 2, um, 2 mil. So it comes with the collection tube, the filter cup or inserts, and then you have this additional part, which serves not only as a cap, but also as a concentrate collection um, tube. So to use it, again, insert the filter cup inside the collection tube, load your sample from the top, close the assembly with the cap, and place this in the centrifuge. Either a fixed angle rotor, similar to this one, but of course with the right size for this kind of tube, or in a swing bucket rotor with this type of adapter. At the end of your spin, remember tip number one, keep your filtrates. And tip number two, you simply flip this over so that your cap becomes your collection tube for the concentrates. You place this back in the centrifuge for the recovery spin. And at the end, you have your concentrates in the bottom part here. So that's it for the Amicon Ultra 2. And now we're just going to have a look at the Amicon Ultra 4 and 15. They have the exact same de uh, design, so we'll just do them together, and I'll use the larger device. So to use this one, again, filter cup inside the collection tube, load your sample from the top, and place it in the centrifuge for the ultra centrifugation. These devices, both, the both the 4 and 15, are compatible with a fixed angle rotor with a suitable um, rotor, of course, and also with a swing bucket rotor. As you notice, this is a classical shape of a 50 ml tube, so you already probably have those kind of inserts in your laboratory. After the spin here, you won't be able to um, do a reverse spin. This is because you have a thick plastic lip here on top of the filter cup to hold it securely um, inside the tube for the centrifugation and to bring robustness to the assembly. However, no panic. You see that the filter cup is much larger so you have no trouble going all the way to the bottom and collect your sample with a pipette tip. If you're a bit worried, you can still use a thin pipette tip that you may use to load your Western bar, for instance. It's the same with the Amicon Ultra, uh, the Amicon Ultra 4. You see again the thick lip here that maintains the filter cup. So since we're just mentioning recovery, I will take a few seconds to mention tip three. Um, and this is in the case um, you put your sample, you perform your first spin, your, uh, and then you collected your sample from the yeah. filter cup, but you cannot detect your protein in your concentrates. Um, usually what people may be worried is that maybe the protein bind to the membrane. However, as it was mentioned earlier, regenerated cellulose is very low protein binding, so this is unlikely. However, what may have happened is that the protein was over-concentrated and crashed out of solution. Um, so this really depends on your protein, potentially the buffer as well. Um, so what we recommend is to monitor your concentration of your sample. Here you have graduation to calculate the concentration factor. Um, and when you're running this assay for the first time, really try several timings and several centrifugation speed to avoid this protein precipitation effect. So next. What I want to do here is to compare the Amicon Ultra 4 with an alternative product that you can find on the market, also for the purpose of ultra centrifugation. So the Amicon always with the pink cap and this alternative product with the blue cap. 
So the first thing we can notice is the difference in design. Thermicon Ultra 4 has one insert into a full tube compared to this other product where you actually have an insert in half a tube. And this particular design can make it a bit more fragile, especially if you centrifugate it. And for instance, at the end of the spin, you can imagine this is very tight. If you want to recover your filtrates, you may spill it. Um, another difference due to this uh, difference in design is the filter cup. So you can see that the, the membrane panel and the Amicon are very long and thin. Compare to here, this alternative product, when you see you have shorter and wider membrane panels. And what you see is that the membrane panels go all the way to the bottom to the filter cup. So the dead stop is built in a different way where the plastic part in the middle. And this actually creates a smaller dead stop, which increases the risk of over concentration of your sample. Because of the shape of those two different filter cups as well, the process, the process volume is going to be different. In Amicon Ultra, you can put up to four mil in your reservoir. Here you can put up to six mil. However, no panic if you have a six mil sample and you only have this device in your lab. I'll mention tip number four. You may be able to reload your sample a little bit. So what you will do is you first load your four ml, perform a first spin, maybe just 10 minutes to kind of evacuate as much solution as possible. You see there's a bit of room here in the collection tube, especially if you put it in a swing you bucket broader. So you evacuate two mil, and then you can reload your sample on the top. So you can process your six mil without a problem. As long as your sample is not too concentrated, you want to avoid clogging. And as long as you don't wait for the very last um, centrifuge, uh, centrifugal spin, because you don't want to allow your membrane to dry. Once it's dry, it won't be efficient to filter your sample. So although it's single use, as long as you reload your sample during the assay, you can work with a 6 ml sample um, with this kind of device. And the last important difference between those two devices is the material of the membrane. So Pavel already mentioned the difference between regenerated cellulose in the Amicon Ultra and PES, which is in this alternative product. So what I did here is I recreated the experiment that was shown in the little video. I have here a diluted solution of cytochrome C. So you see it has a red color. And I concentrated this using the two devices. So those two devices are rated um, 10 kDA with the membrane. The concentrate is in the filter cup. And then if we want to compare the filtrate here, I'm putting it on the white background. You can see that the Amicon here with the pink cap as a perfectly clear filtrate compared to the alternative product with the blue cap, where you see a pinkish color in the filtrates. I'm putting them again close together, white background. I think you can see this nicely in here. So this is really a visual demonstration of the difference in the retention of both of these materials. All right, so that's it for the different Amicon Ultra Centrifugal filters. However, I will speak about one more product, a, bro a broader product, the Centricon 70 here. So the largest Amicon is for um, samples up to 15 mL. This centrifugal device is up for 70 mL, so it's quite convenient to working with cell culture supernatant, for instance. So this product comes in six parts. You have a filter cup or insert, the rating of the membrane is written on the sticker so that you can follow um, the rating of the device you're using. You see the inside of the insert. You have two cylinders and you have two membranes that are wrapped inside the cylinders. So the sample enters the cylinders here and exits through the bottom. Then you have a first container to recover your filtrates and a second container here to recover your concentrates. So to use this device, you will put the filter cup inside the first container and you hear a click when you know it's secure. Load your sample from the top, close again with the lid and place this in the centrifuge. This is compatible only with fixed uh, with a swinging bucket rotor, sorry, with this type of adapter like this here. 
you perform your first spin. Tip number one, always store your filtrate until the end. You have the little lid to keep this safe. And then tip number two, perform your reverse spin. Indeed, if you look again at the structure of this filter cup, you can notice that the sample is unaccessible with the filter tip. It just doesn't fit here inside the cylinders. But you can just put those two parts together, flip it upside down, and so your sample inside the cylinders will be centrifuge in this container in your recovery spin like this. All right, so here, that's it for the centrifugal filters in the tube shape. So I'll just give you a little overview here. So from the smallest samples with the Amicon Ultra 0.5, Amicon Ultra 2 mil, 4 mil, 15 mil, and let's not forget the Centricon for much larger samples. However, um, there's one last centrifugal device that we'll cover. It is the ultra filtration plate. So we'll just have a quick overview here and I'll go back to my bench to show you. So it appears as a classical 96 well plate. Here, however, if we zoom on the side, you can notice that it has an elevated profile and this is to process samples up to 300 microliter. You can see inside here that each well contains a regenerated cellulose membrane that is going to be sealed with an orange O-ring. These are the little circles, the dark circles you see inside the wells. So sealed with an O-ring and not glue to avoid extractables. To use a 96 well plate, you will need a collection plate. A standard collection 96 well plate usually is compatible, but we have several um, reference lists in the user guide. Then you simply place your filter plate on top of your collection plates. It should not move so much. And then you can load your plate either manually if you have a pipette, but you can also do so with a robot. And all the dimensions of the plate are listed in the user guide so you can program your instrument easily. Once your sample is loaded, you secure it with your lid to avoid evaporation. And then you will place the assembly in a swinging bucket rotor. This one is for multi wall plates. Just put everything together. Take it to the centrifuge for your spin. At the end of your spin, you can recover your concentrate in the filter plates and or your filtrates inside the collection plates. So this particular device is currently available with 10 kilodalton membranes, and soon it will be available with 30 kilodalton um, membranes. So I'll just come back here um, just to mention tip number five, because we're talking about different molecular uh, weighting for the membrane. So we mentioned viruses, nucleic acid, for instance, in the presentation. And this is because those filters can be used for other type of samples than proteins. Um, however, it's important to keep in mind that you will consider different parameters if you're working with nucleic acid or viruses when you're picking your molecular weight, rate, your molecular weight um, cutoff. So here are some examples. So that's tip number five. If you're working with nucleic acid, you need to consider the rod shape of this molecule, contrary to protein that may be globular, the length of the in nucleotide, the strandedness of your nucleic acid, the form if you're working with plasmid, whether it's super coral or maybe relaxed, um, and the velocity of the centrifugation as well. If you're working with viruses, you need to take into account the buffer composition and the velocity of centrifugation. So most of the times when you're working with nucleic acid or viruses, we'll recommend decreasing the centrifugal speeds um, to have something a bit more gentle for these molecules. So we have a range of application notes for um, this type of application, so don't hesitate to, to contact us for some guidelines. So now we're done with all the centrifugal instruments and we're gonna switch to the Amicon steer cell, the, which work with pressure. Um, this is pressure-driven device. Um, so one may have different um, reasons to prefer or need to work with this device contrary to the Amicon Ultra centrifugal filters. The reason number one is just, just the volume of your sample. If you're working with an Amicon, you will have a volume up to 15, Centricon up to 17 mL, but if you have something bigger, 
the Amicon Stir Cell is available in the 50 ml um, uh, size. This is the 200 ml. We also have a 400 ml. And you can also attach an external reservoir for even larger volumes if you have liters, for instance. The second reason is whether your sample is fragile, for instance. Some proteins may not like um, to be centrifuged. There will be um, really high strength on them for a short time, and they may be too fragile to withstand this. Here, with pressure filtration, you will have pressure that will slowly push your sample through the membrane at the bottom of the cell here. So this is a lot more gentle, a lot more slower. Um, so this may be more suitable for some sort of protein. Third, third reason is also the versatility of this product. Compared to the Amicon Ultra, which is single use and non-sterile, these products can be reused several times. All the parts that comes in contact with the samples can be autoclave, so you can create a sterile environment. And you can you also have the choice of membranes you want to put in this device. So you have a choice of regenerated cellulose, but also PES membranes. So that's good if you have um, a sample you're unsure of and you want to try different materials. And we also have a larger range of molecular weight cutoff from one kilodalton all the way to 500 kilodalton. So just before showing you the, the, the dry demo for this uh, instrument and show you how it is assembled, I will just mention the last tip, which will be um, tips number six. Um, so contrary to the Amicon device here, because the sample is applied perpendicularly to the membrane, you won't have this tangential flow so, uh, like filtration that was mentioned. So you may have a risk of clogging, but also membrane polarization. So I'm sure you're familiar with the clogging, but I'll just spend a couple of seconds to explain what is membrane polarization. So it's tip number six. If you're working with a very heterogeneous sample, um, you will have different sides of protein, for instance, here. And your large protein here in blue may accumulate on top of the filter, and this may form a gel-like layer that will act as a secondary filter on top of your membrane already. And this may block the passage of those yellow molecules that are smaller. These should go through without a problem through the membranes, but because of this gel layer, these are actually blocked. And so you have membrane polarization. To address this potential issue in the steer cell, we have included a magnetic steer bar here. So this magnetic steer bar is going to mix the sample right on top of the membrane without touching it to avoid any accumulation of proteins or molecules. So now let's switch to the assembly of the device and I'll go back to my bench here. here. So here are the different parts of the Amicon Stir Cell. This is the 50 ml model. It's a bit smaller. It will be easier to show you in the, in the camera here. So first, you have your pack of membrane. Here I have a sample of a PS membrane. I apply it to the base and I put an O-ring here to seal that little membrane on the base. If you have a view from the top, this should remind you what we saw in the well of the 96 well plates. You have the silicone O-ring here in orange. Then you take your cell body and you're going to assemble those two parts together. There's no need to force. You will feel when you cannot go further. Then this is our magnetic steer bar. You just insert it in the cell body. Here at the bottom, you have a little outlet. This is where your filtrate will exit the device. So there is this tubing that is provided. You just attach it here. Then you can pour your sample from the top and close the steer cell with the cap. So here, you just screw the top until you can no longer go further. And you will have this button here you need to push down to lock the cell body. Here in the cap, you can see there's another outlet. This is a quick connect-disconnect to pressurize the cell. So this is the second tubing that is provided with the cell. You simply clip it here. And then this tubing will be plugged to a source of clean air or nitrogen tank, for instance. So you're almost ready to filter your sample. I will just bring my magnetic steer here to show you like this. The cell a bit better here. So before 
pressurizing the cell, make sure that this outlet tubing is placed inside a container. You don't want to flood your bench. Here, you can pressurize the cell through this tubing and you can turn on your magnetic steer. And here you can see inside, the magnetic steer is homogenizing the sample right on top of the membrane to avoid the clogging and membrane polarization that were mentioned. All right, and that's it for the live demo from for the different products. So we mentioned ultra centrifugal filters, the ultra filtration plates, and also a device for pressure driven filtration. So we have one last slide to just recap the different tips that were mentioned. Uh, yeah, it's this one. So here, tip number one to tip number six, this is what we were um, mentioning during the live demo. So keep your filtrates. You can perform the reverse spin um, with the Amicon Ultra 0.5, 2, and Centricon. Um, be careful with the over-concentration of your samples. Um, you can reload your sample in the same tube if it's not too concentrated and if you keep the membrane wet. Um, if you are interested in other types of molecules, nucleic acid, viruses, or something else, we do have a range of application notes to give you guidance on how to choose the right molecular weight cutoff. And the final tip that was about membrane polarization. So we recommend using tangential flow-like filtration or at least the mixing of your sample um, to avoid this effect. And that's it. So I think we will take your questions now. You will be managing the questions on the chat, correct? Yes. So thank you very much, Pavel and Lorraine, for this uh, great presentation and fantastic live demonstration of your products. It was really, really interesting. And of course, we received a couple of questions, um, which uh, we will answer now. So first question comes from uh, Adam. Um, is the membrane type not specific to the protein of interest when it comes to non-specific binding? We had some bad results with RC. Yes. So usually, so the rich antidote has lower protein binding than PES, but it depends on your protein. Um, it, it's worth trying both if you have some bad results with rich antidote, but I would not expect um, PES to have less protein binding than rich antidote. Maybe it's a complex protein with um, some interactions. I'm, I'm a bit surprised, but uh, it's worth investigating. I don't know if you want to add anything, Pavel. Yeah, but <clears throat> the proteins, uh, it's millions of proteins uh, worldwide. So it might be that some of the proteins are simply not working with regenerated cellulose. But General Lorraine, as, as Lorraine said, yes, RC is less protein binding, is the lowest protein binding membrane comparing which is in the market. But for some proteins, maybe this is the point, but we need to look farther. So this is not, not like that we can give the solution right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Pavel, when we, you were showing uh, the Amicon um, products examples, Caitlin was asking, are these single use? So all these centrifugal products are single use? Uh, yes, uh, what Lorraine showed, the cent, uh, Amicon steroid cell is the not single use product, but however, the membrane, also membrane is not single use because the membrane for steroid cells can be, can be re uh, regenerated after the usage up to five times. But yes, all centrifugal products are single use ones. Okay. Isabel is asking if you could give an example of an application using the Amicon Ultra uh, and nucleic acid and also with uh, viruses. So for nucleic acid, um, one of the application is working with forensic samples, for instance. You may have a diluted solution of genomic DNA and you need to concentrate it for downstream application. Um, for instance, if you have a two mouth sample, um, two microgram of DNA, you may want to use um, the Amicon Ultra 2, and then you would spin it for 10 minutes, a low speed, 2000G, for instance, in a, in a fixed angle rotor, and that should allow you to concentrate the sample to recover the molecule for downstream application. That's an example. Um, for the viruses, 
Usually the Centricon is relevant. If you're working with a cell culture supernatant, for instance, you may want to recover and concentrate lentivirus um, from lentiviral production. And then, yeah, the Centricon would be suitable with a 100 kDA membrane, um, for instance. And there are some application notes on the web just to showing how to how to use the amicons with different viruses, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, Mercedes has an application question. To perform complete solvent exchange to water, we need to add water and carry out centrifugal steps several times. This implies important decrease of protein yield. How can we avoid it? So if you're doing a buffer exchange with the device, indeed you would keep adding some water on top of your of your sample, but the proteins will not go through the filter through, into the filtrate. So the protein will keep being um, concentrated or stuck in the filter cup. So you should not have any loss as long as you just keep um, adding your sample and not centrifugating or not damaging the filter. The protein will still retain on top of the membranes. According to our data, which I had a quick look, uh, means that after a few or four centrifugal steps, if needed for the buffer exchange, it might be that the recovery is uh, varying from 95% to 93%, which is almost nothing. So we are not losing, according to the data which we have. Another point, Lorraine, please correct me if I'm wrong. Amicon Pro also might be used for the uh, buffer exchange with one spin. Yes, the Amicon Pro is, a, is another device. It's basically, you would have a little filter cup like this, but with a very large reservoir. So basically you only need one spin because you fill that reservoir up to 15 ml of your water, for instance. And then with just one spin, you have this continuous buffer exchange. So it's a bit more gentle um, compared to in the Amicon Ultra that has a smaller uh, reservoir. Uh, and it is also possible because the uh, construction of Amicon Pro is slightly different. That means that the new buffer, uh, which has to replace the old buffer, does not mix with the old ones, means the one speed is enough. So if you would need more about Amicon Pro, then please visit the website and you can find more, or you can just approach us or our colleagues in Fisher to find out about Amicon Pro. We simply didn't have time today to show you also Amicon Pro. Okay. Adam has another question. Uh, do you offer any two TFF lab solutions for one liter? For one liter? It's Pelicon. So anything that's above the 70 ml for this, uh, for this device, it will go to our colleagues at Process Solution. They handle more cartridges uh, for very large volumes for pharma production, for instance. Yeah. Uh, but one liter may be a bit small for a cartridge, but they may have some uh, some products. So I I remember this is because it does not belong to our to our responsibilities, Lorraine or myself. But uh, the product which should be or still available is Pelicon Pelicon XL. This is for the volumes like one or two liters, and it uses the cartridges with the real TFF uh, application. Okay. Isabel is asking, uh, can we do buffer exchange in the Amicon steward cell? So. Yes, so if I just take the Amicon steward cell again. Um, so while you're concentrating, the volume inside your cell is going to decrease. You can choose to either open the cell and add, add your buffer of choice on top of this. You can do this several times until you have the, the buffer exchange rate you want. You can also do in continuous mode. To do so, you would need an external reservoir and a manifold to pilot the whole system. So basically through this outlet, this is where the gas was entering the cell, you can connect it to the manifold and choose whether it's your buffer of choice coming from the reservoir that's gonna feed the cell or the gas to push the sample through the membrane. So this way you can decide, I want to maintain about 50 ml volume um, inside your cell by adding either the buffer or the, the gas um, to push the, the sample inside the cell. Okay, Susan has another application question. How does the temperature affect the pore size? I used an Amicon Ultra for three uh, kilo Dalton filter with four milliliter sample and centrifuged uh, 4000 G for one hour at four degrees and just 100 microliter solution passed through. So the temperature will definitely affect the flow rates in the membranes. Um, usually, if you're working fragile protein, uh, a lot of end users prefer to, to centrifuge at four, but this usually in, in, um, implies that you will have to increase the length of your centrifuge, uh, centrifuge spin for sure. 
Yeah, and the lower temperature it is, then the viscosity of the sample is bigger. So it means that from that point also, it might be that, that in the same time you can achieve more. So the, the advice is, um, the common practice is to operate at the highest temperature tolerated by the solutes and by the equipment, by the products. But so, so this is why it's, so I don't think this is the, 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 the point that temperature affect the pore size, but temperature affect the, the, the solution quality or whatever, the viscosity. Um, yeah, Caitlin asked if it would be possible to uh, send the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so um, I would say if um, yeah, uh, people need additional material or have questions even after the webinar, please send us your request to uh, our marketing um, email address I shared in the chat. Um, Mercedes is asking, is it possible to recover the sample in less than 20 microliters with Amicon? So the smallest dead, uh, dead volumes, dead stop volume with this, this one, um, I believe it's 15. 15, it's yes, 15 microliters. So that would be the, the lowest volume that you can recover. Um, and this is also to prevent your over concentration. So if you really absolutely need a smaller volume, you're also taking a risk of over concentrating the sample. Yeah. So wondering how it might be on the on the uh, mouth plates, ultrafiltration plates. What is the? I don't remember what is the concentration volume on the on the mouth plates. It might be smaller than 15 microliters, I guess. It might be smaller because the, the memory is going to be horizontal, so the dead volume is going to be uh, thankful. Yes. Thankfully. Yeah, but we, I, we don't, I don't remember the volume, the, the, the real volume. But with this centrifugal, as already said, it's 15 microliters, so then and not less we can have. Mm. Okay, next question. Um, Mathieu is wondering if protein absorptions uh, occur on the membrane, whatever the molecular weight limit is, and how to avoid it. So as we were mentioning earlier, rich and cellulose is supposed to have low protein binding, so we would not expect um, uh, protein absorption. However, how also it was uh, um, asked earlier, it may be that your particular protein just doesn't react well with this material. Um, the different pore size, uh, regardless of the pore size, um, the protein binding should be low. The, the pore size does not affect the, the, the protein binding. Okay, so next question comes from Miel. What do you use to put pressure on the last device shown? So in the amiconstru cell, you can have a clean air, but a lot of people have nitrogen tanks in their lab. So this is what they use to pressurize the cell. Yeah, I have seen some customers who are using, some researchers who are using just the vacuum pressure pump and apply to that. And for some certain purposes, it is enough. Yeah, but as Lorraine said, it's better to have clean air uh, pressurized or nitrogen if some proteins does, do not work with the, with the pressurized air that might be necessary to use nitrogen. Okay. As far as I can see, the last question comes from Alessia. How does the centrifugation time affect the result? Does a maximum time for centrifugation exist to avoid membrane collapse? Is there any difference between one hour centrifugation or two times 30 minutes centrifugation? So because of the dead stop, you can virtually just centrifuge your, your sample hours because you will always have um, some solution at the bottom of your filter cup. Um, so now the longer you centrifuge your filter, um, the more concentrate, uh, concentrated your sample will be. So if you really want to reach the dead volume, then an hour spin, may re you may reach, uh, reach to this uh, point with an hour spin. If you don't want this maximum concentrating factor, you can just reduce um, the spin. Um, and I think the second part of the question was whether to do one hour a spin or two times 30 minutes. Um, it should not affect the end results. The only thing is that if you do two times 30 minutes, you can just take a peek at where you're at in the concentration um, and then stop it as early as possible when you, you know that you've reached your, your, your um, sample concentration, uh, your desired sample concentration. Okay, thank you. I think there's no question more anymore. 
Thank you very much, Pavel and Lorraine, for answering all the questions. It was really interesting, and I enjoyed very much uh, the webinar and the demonstration. Um, I will now hand over to you, Eva, to yeah to conclude the session. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so after this interesting session, uh, the webinar is over. So, however, before we close the session, I'd like to thank you once again for joining us today. And I would also like to extend a special thank you to our presenters, Laurent and Pavel, uh, for delivering a very engaging and interesting session. And I really like the live demo part. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> before leaving you, I'd like to remind you to keep an eye on our web page to look out for next webinars, as well as the recording of today's session. Uh, and of course, if you want to stay informed about the latest news and upcoming webinars, feel free to follow us on our social media channels like LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube. Wishing you a great afternoon and until we meet again, goodbye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you for having You're us ready. today and for staying with us. And thank you, Nettina uh, and Eva. Thank you, Lorraine, for this great presentation from the lab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Goodbye.